Warfare is starting to get more high-tech, as the world's biggest militaries are starting to field remote-controlled light and heavy tanks to add to the growing arsenal of remote-controlled flying drones. The US military is currently developing packs of semi-autonomous robot tanks that will be armed to the brim with chain guns, missiles, and other fearsome weaponry. As they make their way to future battlefields, these robotic combat vehicles, or RCVs, will be used to lead the charge in both conventional and electronic warfare in the years to come. The US is currently building robotic light, medium, and heavy combat vehicles. Respectively, these are lightweight scouting vehicles, heavily armed mini-tanks, and powerful artillery vehicles. For now, the Army wants to make sure that it's a human pulling the trigger on the weapons, so each vehicle will have one human remotely steering and another remotely operating its weapons. The tanks will still be partially autonomous, but humans will take over once they reach the front lines and when they need to steer them through enemy fire. In addition to direct combat, the Army wants the RCVs to take down swarms of drones. This might take the form of anti-drone lasers or electronic jamming that renders drones useless. Russia's fifth-generation main battle tank is so advanced, its designers are telling Western media outlets that operating it is like playing a computer game. The T-14 Armada tank, which features an automated gun turret and a new type of reactive armor, was shown off by Russia during its May 9th victory parade in Moscow celebrating the 70th anniversary of the fall of Nazi Germany. The Armada will reportedly be faster than America's Abrams tank and will enter service next year. The new tank features a 125mm smoothbore cannon that fires missiles as well as shells, a remote-controlled machine gun, and an advanced armor package along three-quarters of its length. It could possibly hit speeds of over 80 km per hour, have a target detection range of over 5 km, and have a shooting range of at least 3.5 km. For increased survivability, its three crew will be protected by a multi-layer armor capsule that is separate from the ammunition container. The T-14 was designed to replace Russia's T-72 and T-90 main battle tanks. Russia plans for more than 2,300 armadas to enter service with its military over the next 15 years. The official cost of the new tank has not been disclosed, but observers say it may cost as much as a fighter jet. The acquisition of 2,300 armadas is part of a 400 billion U.S. dollar program to upgrade Russia's military that also includes hundreds of aircraft and missiles and dozens of new Navy ships. It won't be long before the Pentagon will be able to launch surprise attacks on America's enemies from deep beneath the sea. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is developing a defense technology using special pods that hibernate on the ocean floor until they are deployed. Called Upward Falling Payloads, or UFPs, the pods are 15 feet high and can contain drones or weapon systems. The pods would be pre-positioned throughout the world's oceans lying dormant until they are activated in weeks, months, or years. Once released remotely, the UFP riser rapidly floats to the surface with the help of a buoyant collar. It then deploys on the surface, releasing whatever drone or weapon is contained inside. DARPA is currently building and sea testing the system's riser and communication components. The next phase will involve sea demonstrations. China featured the most current main battle tank in its arsenal, the Type 99, during its 70th National Day military parade on October 1st. The Chinese Army's Type 99 family of battle tanks, also known as the ZTZ-99, feature a hull that resembles a lengthened T-72 hull and a turret inspired by the German Leopard 2. According to the national interest, the Type 99 has an autoloader and is armed with a Russian-style 125mm smoothbore gun that fires shells and AT-11 sniper anti-tank missiles. The article speculates the tank's 125mm cannon could penetrate the frontal armor of the U.S. Abrams tank when firing tungsten rounds at close range, while a newer variant, the Type 99A2, has an even longer barrel main gun. The tank can hold three crew members, the commander, gunner, and driver. The National Interest reports that the Type 99 uses a composite armor and explosive reactive armor, or ERA, explosive blocks added to the armor that resist enemy armor piercing shells and missiles. The Type 99A2 variant has a multi-layered system that uses a radar to detect incoming projectiles and detonates the ERA tiles before impact, similar to the relic system developed by Russia. In addition, the Type 99 is protected by a laser warning receiver that warns the tank's commander if and when a hostile laser targeter is painting the tank. 
China has fielded and produced around 600 Type 99 tanks, including original Type 99s and the more advanced Type 99As, since they entered into service in 2001. Israel plans to equip its battle tanks with artificial intelligence. The Merkava Mark IV Barak will reportedly be the first tank to have a smart mission computer to manage tasks. New Atlas reports Israel's Merkava Mark IV Barak would have an advanced AI system which would help to locate targets and strike accurately. Virtual reality will also be added onto the tank, with combat soldiers using a helmet called Iron View to see the outside environment from inside the combat vehicle. Virtual reality simulations are aimed at allowing the soldiers to partake in military exercises in real time. A press release claims updated sensors equipped on the outside of the tank would allow the combat soldiers to operate the tank in a simple and advanced way. The press release also states these improvements will help the tank carry out missions that are up to 30% longer than current ones. BAE Systems and General Dynamics have been chosen by the U.S. Army to build prototype tanks. Both companies have been given a contract of 376 million U.S. dollars to build 12 medium armor prototype vehicles that are compatible with Infantry Brigade Combat Teams, or IBCTs. According to a BAE Systems press release, the company will create a light combat vehicle called the BAE Systems Mobile Protected Firepower that will have scaled armor, survivability subsystems, and a M35 105mm cannon along with other features. Its cannon will include an auto-loading ammunition system capable of firing 12 rounds per minute. According to a General Dynamics news release, the company said it looks forward to providing a large-caliber mobile combat vehicle to support the troops. The winning vehicle is expected to have the ability to defeat heavy machine guns and armored vehicles as well as maintain defensive operations. These light armored vehicles will be designed to travel fast on missions to areas that are harder to reach for heavier vehicles. The U.S. Navy is deploying a new laser weapon for its warships. The U.S. Navy has put its first laser-equipped destroyer to sea. In a news release dated February 20th, Sea Systems Command says the Optical Dazzling Interdictor Navy, or ODIN, is designed to help ships counter enemy surveillance drones. Citing the command, Military.com reports the ODIN was installed on the Arleigh Burke-class destroyer Dewey in November. An image published by The Drive shows that the laser dazzler appears to be mounted in a turret atop the deckhouse. Odin's predecessor, the Laser Weapon System, is a 30-kilowatt laser that has been tested but never operationally fielded. Military.com reports that Iranian drones had shadowed the carrier George H.W. Bush in the Persian Gulf, and the laser will stymie hostile drones' attempt to gather intelligence on U.S. warships. The outlet reports that Odin is only one of the laser weapons planned by the service, Another weapon, a 60 to 150 kilowatt laser, which has a range of 5 nautical miles, will likely be installed on another destroyer by 2021. The U.S. Navy shot down an aerial drone with a solid-state laser weapon during a test off Pearl Harbor on May 16th, according to the Pacific Fleet. This exercise marked the first shot fired by the laser weapon system demonstrator at sea. Video footage released by the Navy shows the laser to apparently disable a target drone, which caught fire. The U.S. Navy Institute reports the prototype is the second iteration of the Navy's solid-state laser program, with the aim of creating a 150-kilowatt laser weapon. The amphibious stock Portland was selected as a test platform for the experimental weapon. Naval documents published by the Drive suggest the laser should include power and cooling units, other subsystems, and integration with the Aegis combat system. According to the U.S. Navy Institute, the LWSD represents advancements in laser director and spectral beam combining technology, which combines multiple beams of different wavelengths into a more powerful laser. Additionally, the Navy is developing other lasers that will be suitable for the fleet's destroyers that lack the energy output for solid-state type weapons. These lasers would include hard-kill systems as well as less-than-lethal dazzlers that would dissuade approaching boats and disable surveillance platforms. In March, a Chinese destroyer used a laser dazzler on a U.S. aircraft, prompting a warning from the U.S. Navy on social media. Do not play a laser tag with us. The U.S. is deploying a drone-killing microwave weapon overseas for the first time. The Pentagon announced that it has awarded a $16.28 million contract to Raytheon for a prototype high-power microwave weapon system. The U.S. Air Force will deploy the weapon overseas at an unspecified location for a year-long assessment. 
The system, called Phaser, can disable drones weighing less than 55 pounds that fly at altitudes of 1,200,000 to 3,500,000 feet and speeds of 115 to 230 miles per hour. According to Popular Mechanics, these include drones like the RQ-11 Raven and Scan Eagle. Phaser projects radio frequencies in a conical beam that can disrupt or destroy a drone's internal systems. It is an electric field effect rather than a thermal one, but the results are instantaneous. The drive reports that targeted drones either fall out of the sky or initiate a pre-programmed emergency procedure. The weapon has anti-swarm potential, having been designed to counter groups of drones simultaneously. It also has an unlimited magazine that can help repel sustained attacks from multiple groups of drones. Fox News reports that the move appears timely due to the recent drone strikes on two oil processing facilities in Saudi Arabia. However, according to Raytheon's chief technologist for direct energy Don Sullivan, the plan has been in the works since late last year. Around 20 drones and cruise missiles were used to carry out the Saudi oil attacks, and according to Popular Mechanics, some of the drones may have been small enough to be disabled by phaser. The HPM system, however, is not known to work on cruise missiles, says the Air Force and Raytheon. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.